Dear Muslims, we are all aware in the seerah of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam when he was doing the hijrah from Mecca to Medina and they took shelter in Ghari Thawr that the Quraysh were so close to finding Abu Bakr and the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam so much so that Abu Bakr himself began trembling and he whispered to the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam Ya Rasulullah they are so close I can see their feet if they only look down, they will see us. And our Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, Ya Aba Bakr, ma dhannuka bithnayn, Allahu thalithuhuma. O Abu Bakr, what do you think of two people, the third of whom is Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala? And that calmness, the confidence, the optimism calmed Abu Bakr down when they had no army and they had no help other than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is but one indication of a very important concept in the life of every believer, and that is to have good thoughts of Allah, and to think the best of the plan of Allah. To be optimistic, in Arabic, have husna dhan, to think the best thoughts of Allah. This is a part and parcel of our iman. The believer only thinks good of Allah. The believer does not allow his mind to wander to negative thoughts, to evil thoughts. The believer focuses on the positive and thinks the best thoughts of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Our Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said in a hadith in Abu Dawood that to have good thoughts of Allah in the husna dhan billah it is of the perfection of worshipping Allah. You want to worship Allah, you begin with the mind. You begin with your thoughts. You begin with where your waswasa goes. You want to worship Allah before you look at your actions, you look at your heart and you look at your mind. So how do you perfect your worship of Allah? You have good thoughts about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and about the plan of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. In the famous hadith reported in Bukhari and Muslim, the highest level of hadith, our Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said that Allah says, so this is a hadith Qudsi that is muttafaq alayhi, the highest level. It is the most blessed and the most authentic. What did Allah say in this hadith Qudsi? Ana inda dhanni abdi bi. I am as my servant thinks I am. I am as my servant thinks I am. So whoever thinks good thoughts will find the realization of those good thoughts. And whoever thinks bad thoughts will find the realization of that bad thought as well. What does all of this mean, dear Muslims? To summarize, because time is always limited, I will remind ourselves of four especially specific occasions that we should think positive thoughts. Number one, when we are faced with a calamity, when we're trapped against a wall, when it looks like all the doors have been shut, when we are facing anxiety, stress, grief, worries, our thoughts should think positive thoughts. We should say, Allah will take care of this. We should think, Allah will solve my problems. We should have husna dhan in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Just like our Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam did when he was trapped in the cave of Thawr, when there was no way out except for the way of Allah. Just like the Prophet Ya'qub, when he is waiting 20, 30 years for Yusuf, not a single word of Yusuf. And at the end, he says to his sons, Oh my children, go forth in the land and try to find Yusuf. And do not give up hope of the help of Allah. For nobody gives up hope of the help of Allah except those that have lost everything. He lost his son. He didn't lose hope in Allah. And he said, Allah will bring Yusuf back to me. لا تيأسوا من روح الله Don't give up hope of the help of Allah. Allah will help us. So whatever your situation, whether it is economic problem, you're hunting for a job, you are in debt, you have financial issue, whether it is a family problem, spouse issue, whether it is your son or daughter, whether it is a sickness, whether it is this global plague and pandemic, we think the best thoughts 
Inshallah soon there will be a, a cure to this virus. Inshallah soon we'll get the antidote. Inshallah within this year, everything will be back to normal. We have positive thoughts of any negative situation. And we assume the best that Allah will take care of it. Number two, when we have positive thoughts, whenever we ask Allah for His forgiveness, when we want istighfar and maghfirah, when we want Allah's forgiveness, we always have positive thoughts of Allah. For indeed, Allah forgives all sins. And the hadith tells us that the one who gives up hope of Allah's mercy has committed the bigger sin than any sin he might have done. To think that Allah will not forgive you is a bigger sin than any sin you could possibly have done. So we never give up hope of Allah's mercy, Allah's forgiveness. Number three, when we make dua to Allah, we should have yaqeen that Allah will answer our dua. Ud'u Allah wa antum muqinuna bil ijaba. Make dua to Allah and you have yaqeen that Allah will give you what you want or something better than that. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Allah is so generous that when his servants raise his hands to Allah, Allah is too shy to allow that hand to come back down without putting something in it. This is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah is kareem. Allah is kareem. And He shall give and give and give. So whenever you raise your hands to Allah for anything, have good thoughts that Allah will give me what I'm asking or something better that I don't know and Allah knows, but He shall give me something. So we have good thoughts of Allah when we make dua. And then the final point, and time is limited, I cannot go on. The final point, that a person was on his deathbed and the Prophet ﷺ asked him, what is your state of mind? What do you think? And he said, Ya Rasulallah, I am worried for my sins, but I'm hopeful. I'm hopeful. I have good expectations that Allah shall forgive me. So the Prophet ﷺ said, never do these emotions combine at this point in time, except that Allah shall fulfill that good attitude. In other words, number four, at the time of death, it is so important that we have good thoughts of Allah. That we have good thoughts of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Our Prophet ﷺ said, let none of you die except that you have the best thoughts about Allah, that Allah shall forgive your sins and Allah shall give you good for what you have done. So these are the four occasions and there are more than these. Number one, at times of calamity, any time of grief and stress. Number two, when we ask for Allah's forgiveness. Number three, when we make dua. And number four, at the time of death. Especially in these times, let us be optimistic. Let us have good thoughts of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and let us put our trust in Allah that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will give us better than our thoughts thoughts of him. May Allah Azza wa Jal bless me and you with and through the Quran and may he make us of those who is verses they understand and applies halal and haram throughout our lifespan. I ask Allah's forgiveness. You as well ask him for he is the Ghafoor and the Rahman. Alhamdulillah al-wahid al-ahad al-samad al-ladhi lam yalid wa lam yulad wa lam yakul lahu kufwan ahad wa ba'du. One of the most beautiful things of our faith is that we are commanded by our Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam to read in positive omens to everything around us. In a hadith in Sahih Bukhari, our Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, there is no such thing as negative omens. Pause here, what does that mean? You know, in every society, every culture, there's something called bad luck. If the cat crosses, it's bad luck. If you break glasses, bad luck. If this happens, it's bad luck. Our Sharia came to eliminate these mythologies, superstitions. It's not true. There's no such thing as bad luck. Eliminate it from your minds.